Shipbuilding in Starfield can be an expensive and finicky process, but it's well worth the effort. We're going to break down the ins and outs of shipbuilding so you can explore the field of stars in style. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, there's a few skills we need to unlock first. The piloting skill in the first row of the tech tree is required if you plan on flying B and C class spaceships. While each class has their own strengths and weaknesses, I've found that B class modifications serve my playstyle the best because they strike a decent balance between speed, maneuverability, and cargo load. Additionally, you'll want to unlock the starship design skill in the third row of the tech tree. The more you rank up this skill, the more ship parts and modifications you'll have access to. Next, you'll need to accrue a small fortune. While you can design budget starships, I recommend saving your hard-earned credits until you can go wild and make the starship of your dreams. Ideally, I'd kick off the building process with around 100,000 credits, but price ranges can vary depending on a ton of factors. You can also steal ships fairly early in the game by disabling their engines in space combat and then boarding them, but you'll need to pay to register them. However, some of these ships can make for a good jumping off point. Before we start building, there are a few concepts you'll want to familiarize yourself with. Class, mass, mobility, and cargo. We've already touched on starship classes, but it's imperative that you understand the differences and how to change a starship's class when it comes to building. The number one thing to keep in mind is that a ship's reactor determines its class. This means that if you want to load up your ship with a bunch of B-class modifications, you need to ensure your reactor matches. As I said at the beginning, you can't pilot B and C class ships until you've upgraded your piloting skill. Ship class also determines how much mass a ship can carry. Different classes have different mass limits. A class ships have lower mass limits, while C class ships have higher limits. Typically, structural and aesthetic ship parts have very low mass, while ship parts that serve a purpose, such as engines and cargo holds, have a high mass. Mass is also tied to mobility, which determines how responsive your starship is. The heavier your ship, the stiffer flight will be. This stat is less important than you might think because in combat a lot of weapons auto target as long as an enemy ship is reasonably near your aim point. In a bind, throw on more engines, even cheap ones, to mitigate this pretty easily. Cargo, of course, is how much junk and resources your ship can hold. I recommend sparing no expense here. You'll need these resources for most of the game's crafting and building systems outside of starships, which only take cash. I've spent hours managing my inventory, my ship's inventory, and my companion's inventory, so it's nice to have a big old cargo hold that I can just toss everything into and forget about. Also, if you're going to start smuggling contraband, invest in shielded cargo, which lets you hide items from scans. Shielded cargo can be purchased at the key. Shop's always open as long as your money's good. Traveling through star systems depends on a few different factors. The tier of your grav drive determines how far you can jump, which can also be extended by leveling the science skill astrodynamics. Fuel determines how many jumps it will take for you to reach a far off system. You can still get to far places by making multiple jumps unless the distance between the last star and the place you are going exceeds your max jump range. Ideally, you'll want to hit the 23 to 27 light year range if you want to hit some high level quests. Now, putting full power into your grav drive drive while in flight simply spins up your grav drive faster, mostly useful if you need to make a hasty escape. While most of the habitat modules are for looks, there are a few modules that impact gameplay. Chief among them are the workshop modules. These typically contain workbenches that allow you to craft items and upgrade weapons while aboard your ship. We also recommend building modules horizontally rather than vertically so that you won't have to mess with ladders. Keep in mind though that different service technicians and different factions sell unique parts. While there is some overlap between vendors, it's worth doing some window shopping before you go nuts on your ship. For example, the Demo Star Yard in the Soul System focuses on warships and has a cockpit that can hold an eight-person crew. Meanwhile, the Stroud Eklund Star Yard in the Narian System focuses more on freighter ships. And the Key in the Crick System will sell some pirate-themed parts. Assigned crew can vastly boost your ship's capabilities by contributing their skill sets. However, the number of people on your ship seems to be limited by a few factors. First off, you have to build a ship that has a big enough crew capacity, which you can see as a stat when picking cockpit pits and modules. Some cockpits can immediately handle four crew members, and some modules, like the command module, expands that by another four. However, the number of crew actively assigned to your ship is limited by the social skill ship command, which is at the end of the skill tree. It can be a bit confusing because you can sometimes see companions hanging out on your ship even if they aren't assigned to it. While they are there, they aren't boosting the stats of your ship's systems. Let's get out there and do something new today. 
shall we? When building a ship, the game is very particular about where you put docking bays and couplers. Pay attention to where the different versions attach to your ship, especially where their hatches are. They tend to be the most limiting items and likely to give you errors. For example, landing bays must be attached to the cockpit in some way, but different landing bays have doors in different places. The coupler that attaches you to other objects in space has to be on the outermost part of the ship, so nothing can extend beyond it. If you find yourself with warnings, such as unattached modules, on console, mass select your ship with right bumper, then move the entire thing over to reveal which parts aren't attached. This is also really useful for moving chunks of the ship. You also can't have more than one of certain things like reactors, shields, and jump drives. Another error you'll run into at first is unassigned weapons. Run an error check on your ship, then tab or bumper over one menu and you can assign your weapons there. Shipbuilding can seem overwhelming at first, but the best way to learn is to hop in and start experimenting. Even if you lack the funds or skills to make the perfect starship, you can still hop in the building menu and experiment with different designs and equipment. Hopefully that gets you started, and if you have any building tips, drop them in the comments below, and feel free to share some of your wildest spaceship designs with us.